Hello everyone. We are delighted to welcome you all for another ThinkNix tutorial. We are going to explore YAML today. I'm Deepthi, working as a technical specialist at ThinkNix Technologies. Let's take a look at the agenda for today. Let's first discuss why YAML. Then we will understand what is YAML. We will later talk about the YAML similarities between XML and JSON. And we will also have a look at the YAML syntax. We shall also understand the difference between list and dictionaries through examples. At the end, we will give you information on syntax validator. So without any further ado, let's quickly get started. Let's first start with why YAML. Be it Docker, Kubernetes, Ansible, Prometheus, Solstack, GitLab, or any other modern DevOps tools and applications, they all use YAML. It is commonly used for configuration files and applications. It is one of the most popular language which is human friendly and is also very easy to understand. Let's now discuss what is YAML. YAML stands for YAML Int Markup Language. It is also known as yet another markup language. YAML is a data serialization language. A data serialization language translates the data structure into a standard format that can be stored or transmitted easily. Say for example, if one of the application is written in Java and the other in .NET, they both can communicate with each other using a serialization language. Other examples of serialization languages are XML and JSON. YAML is quite similar to these languages. Let's now compare YAML with XML and JSON. Let's take an example here. In an organization, there would be many employees, right? Now let's consider an employee by name John. We would be using John's details like his name, ID and his manager whose name is Bob. This is how we represent John's details in XML and JSON. This is how we represent the same using YAML. As we can see here, all three are quite similar. YAML is strict superset of JSON. It can do everything that JSON can do, but apart from these, it can do many more. The major difference between YAML and JSON is that YAML uses new lines and indentations, while JSON uses brackets and braces. Let's now discuss how to write YAML. Let's consider the example of the car Honda City. We shall now consider its properties such as name, model and color and this is how we can represent it in YAML. Note that this is a key value pair separated by a colon where keys are name, model and color and the values are city 2022 and red. This type of representation is called a dictionary. The values can be of any data type. For example, for name, we see that the value is a string, for model it's a number. Observe that there is a space after the colon without which the validation fails. Now we do the same for the other car, desire. These two cars belong to the category of cars, isn't it? So we can make a list named cars consisting of Honda and Maruti. This is how we represent lists in YAML. Now we shall add the properties of each car inside the elements Honda and Maruti. Also, we have to have proper indentation in YAML. The list belongs to cars for which we have provided two spaces before the hyphen. For the elements Honda and Maruti, we have provided four spaces. Similarly, for properties of Honda and Maruti, we have provided six spaces. So we have kept two spaces after each hierarchy. Also note that tab is invalid in YAML. Comments in YAML begin with a hash. Comments will be ignored and are used for human understandability. The beginning of a new YAML document is indicated by three dashes while the ending is indicated by three dots. Note that these are not mandatory but are considered as the best practice. We will learn more about dictionaries and list in the upcoming sections. Let's now talk about multi-line string. Let's consider this example here. What if we want to print the two sentences in two separate lines? We could do so by adding a pipe symbol. 
The sample on the left side is not so readable, isn't it? What if we want to print a single line string, but for readability, you want to place them in multiple lines? We could do so by adding a greater than symbol. Let's now talk about dictionary. In YAML, dictionaries are represented as mappings. A mapping is a collection of key value pairs where each key is mapped to a value. Meet J. He's 25 years old and is a software engineer. This information about J can be represented like this in YAML dictionary. We have already spoken about this in the previous slide. It has a key value pair separated by a colon. Let's take the same example of J. This time, what if we want to separate his first name and last name? This is how we can do it using YAML dictionary. Here, we are splitting the name further into first name and last name. This is a dictionary inside another dictionary. Note that the first name and last name are the elements of name. So we need to provide at least one space to indicate the same. Also, the first name and the last name should be equidistant from name. Say for example, if I provide an extra space to the last name, then last name becomes the child element of first name, which does not make any sense, isn't it? But in this example of ours, it absolutely makes sense to use extra space after each element. Let's see how. Meet Preeti and her family. What if we want to represent family tree of Preeti and her brother Raghu? This is how it should be, isn't it? Parents is an element of grandparents, so we have provided one space. Children is an element of parents, so there are two spaces. Child 1 and child 2 are elements of children, so we have provided three space and both should have three spaces. This is an example of parent-child relationship. Let's now talk about list. Let's assume that we have to denote four models of Maruti. These four models belong to the same brand which is Maruti, right? To store the different data which belongs to the same type of object, we can use a list or an array in YAML. Don't forget to notice the lists are represented using a hyphen followed by a space followed by the data. Now, what if we want to note the properties of each car such as its color and price? We can now use dictionary inside lists. We will now change the list to model and its name. For Preza, the properties are red and 14 lakhs, which are represented in the form of dictionary. Similarly, we can add for others as well. This type of representation in YAML is called as list of dictionaries. There is a major difference between dictionary and list. In dictionary, the sequence doesn't matter. It is an unordered collection of data. Say for example, first name and last name positions are interchanged here. Dictionaries fetch the data from its unique key and that is why the sequence doesn't matter here. Whereas for list, the sequence should be followed. Here in our example, these two lists are not same because the order of the list is different. Lists are ordered collections and we have to take care of the sequence. For newbies, indentation could be quite confusing. To help them, there are many syntax validators for YAML available online. The popular one is YAMLint. You can check it out at yamllint.com. With this, we have come to an end of this tutorial. Let's recap what we have discussed. First, we understood how almost all modern DevOps tools and applications use YAML. We also discussed that YAML is a data serialization language. Next, we learned how to write YAML. Post that we understood what are dictionaries and list and also understood the difference between the two. At the end, we discussed how some validators could give us some helping hand during our initial days of learning. Thank you for watching our tutorial. We really hope you liked our video. Please do like and subscribe and click on the link below to know more about ThinkMix. Do let us know what topic you are interested to know next in our comment section below.
Thank you, Abhiyanto. We shall see you soon in our next video. Stay tuned for more updates from us.